Hey everybody. Hey, 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 happy Thursday morning to you, or Thursday morning to me. Um, nice to see you. We've got some people in the chat already. CF Teaching is there. Hi, nice to see you. Uh, who else is there? We've got Zainab is there. Leanne? Yeah, I know it's your first time, first time in Sean's class. Well, welcome. Um, always like to see some first timers. I like to see some familiar faces and names as well, but it's good to see some new people out there as well. Lucas, hello, hello. Abdulaziz is here. Zara, Arshad. <laughs> is that right? Okay. Rabbi, Luciano. All right. Luciano's on time today. That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, I am Sean. For anybody who's new, anybody who just kind of stumbled upon this, um, welcome. Ibnu from the Netherlands, good to see you. All right, cool. Um, yeah, I'm Sean, and I'm coming to you live right now from uh, the studio here at the Canadian College of English Language in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. It's a cold and rainy day here, but I'm nice and warm in the studio, hanging with you guys. Um, if you're watching live, I'm not sure what time it is where you are, or maybe you're watching the video sometime in the future, maybe a hundred years in the future maybe. But um, yeah, it's good to see you. So I'm going to be your teacher for the next hour or so, as you guys know. Khaled is here from Morocco, representing Morocco. Nice. Yeah, we got a widespread of countries and cultures in the chat today. That's great. Cool. All right. So um, let's get started. I hope you're doing well today. And um, as we go through, as usual, as I'm talking, as we're going through the lesson, I'm going to get you guys to do some work for me today. But at any time, if you have questions or comments, obviously put them in the chat and we will try our best to um, answer you as quickly, as often, as best we can. Vivian is here. Hi. Suede as well. Hello. All right. Um, yeah, so put your questions in the chat if you have them, and let's, let's get into it. Today, Ro there's Rosa. Hi, Rosa. Today is a continuation of something that we started doing last week. Maritza from Peru is here. Cool. All right, so last week, um, I started talking about something and, and we kind of ran out of time and I said rather than hurrying through it, rather than really trying to get everything done, that we would break it into two parts because I think it's, it's some useful stuff that you can use in any form of, of communication in the English language, whether it is um, writing or, or, or speaking, um, conversation or academic writing, presentation skills, whatever. Um, <laughs> Rosa, you, was, you were running to be here, yeah? <laughs> yeah, me too. I, was, I, I run in here every, every day too. So let's, let me jump in here into the lesson. There we are. So yeah, as I said, today is, is part two of what we were talking about last week, something called hedging. Okay, now for anybody who missed last week, don't worry about it. Um, this will be kind of an independent, individual lesson itself. If you were here last week or if you watched the video, um, you'll probably have an idea of what I'm talking about as well. Okay, So let's start, not by talking about the word hedging, but let's talk about um, kind of the, f the first word of the day is, is absolute. Okay, This adjective, sometimes used as a noun actually, is, is absolute. This, this, this word is important for what we're talking about today, okay? Khalid is saying when he writes an essay, it looks so bad, I don't know how to improve my writing style. Well, Khalid, you are not alone. I know a lot of people feel that way about their writing, and uh, hopefully what we do today will help you out uh, a little bit, okay? So the word absolute. What does it mean? Well, sometimes it means pure, right? Something is pure, it's, it's total, it's 100% it's something is, is absolute. It's sometimes absolute, the idea of absolute means something is, is perfect, it's complete, uh, total, okay? So absolute 
oftentimes sounds like uh, like a good thing, right? Sometimes, I mean, absolute means means black or white. Something is one thing or it's another, right? Yeah, you're saying complete, exactly, good. A couple weeks ago, we talked about uh, absolute adjectives, meaning adjectives that are either this or this. They can't be in the middle. They can't be graded up or down. A word like perfect, okay? Something is perfect or it isn't perfect. It can't be somewhere really in the middle, right? So perfect is an absolute adjective. This idea of, of this something being black or white is, is absolute, all right? More people join in there? Good, good to see you. We often use certain collocations that we use the, the adjective absolute with, something like absolute secrecy, right? Meaning tell absolutely no one, just, just between these two, whatever that says on that note. <laughs> absolute power, right? Maybe talking about um, uh, politicians, right? Sometimes the leader of a country might have absolute power, total power. All right, so the question is, Oh yeah, so you, you, watch, you watch movies, you listen to English every day, but you have trouble on tests. Yeah, that's a, I mean, that's a, normal, that's a normal problem. You're not alone on that, for sure. Okay, so absolute power, absolute secrecy. The word absolute means something is unquestionable, right? You can't question that person's power. You can't, you can't question an absolute statement. And this is kind of where we're heading today, is this, this idea of what we call absolute statements. When, when you make an absolute statement, when you say something that is absolute, it is a statement that is what we call categorical, unquestionable, it is certain, meaning there, whatever you're saying, there is no doubt that this is uh, the truth. This is an absolute statement, okay? And the reason I'm talking about this is that absolute statements, this is something that causes students problem in writing often or in, in any kind of academic context. Steve is, is here, Vivek is coming in, good to see you. All right, so absolute statements are, as I said, you're saying something that is 100% true, okay? So you have to be careful especially in writing, okay? When you're, when you're writing an essay or when you're giving a presentation in front of a group of people, you want to try to avoid making absolute statements, okay? Or at least be careful of absolute statements. Absolute statements alone are not, uh, are not a problem necessarily, okay? But it depends on, on what, what you're saying, basically. Okay, so let me give you an example of some, some absolute statements, all right? If you start a sentence with something like, all men or all women are this, whatever, whatever comes next, this is an absolute statement. This is potentially an overgeneralization, a categorical statement about all men or all women. The problem with statements like this is they are very often not true, right? Other ones like, everyone knows that. If you start a sentence with, everyone knows that, whatever it is that comes next, even if it's something you think is very, very clear and obvious, you have to be careful with statements like this, okay? Now guys, I see a, a bunch of questions coming into the chat. I'm, I'll try to get to some of them, but we're gonna try to stay on topic here, okay? For, for now, we're gonna talk about absolute statements, all right? If anybody else in the chat has advice for people, people are asking about how to improve speaking skills, what to do with vocabulary they don't know when they're reading. Um, classmates, feel free to give advice to your, uh, your fellow students out there, okay? So all men or uh, women are, everyone knows that, or Another very common uh, statement that I see in student writing is, it is undeniable that this, it is unquestionable that, and CF teaching is saying generalizing, yes, that's right. Right, so Rosa, just hang on a second because this is not hedging yet. This is making absolute statements, okay? There's a difference between those two, a big difference. So if you start a sentence like this, you are making an absolute statement, okay? But 
Absolute statements are not always bad. They're not always wrong. In fact, uh, an absolute statement can be correct if it is a, an accepted fact or truth. Okay? So, Khalid is, yeah, exactly. This is exactly what I'm saying, Khalid. Absolute statements are general facts, and you should stick to the point instead of talking in general. That's exactly right. So, an absolute statement like this, humans need water to live, this is a categorical, absolute statement talking about all humans. It's a generalized uh, statement, but it is, it is true, right? Humans need water to live. This is the truth. So, this type of absolute statement, based on a fact, um, is not necessarily a problem. Okay, it's a, I mean, it is pretty obvious, so I don't think you would want to include that in your essay either. But when you get into trouble is when you say something like this. Everyone knows that humans need water to live, right? Everyone knows that humans need water to live. It seems uh, true, right? Because it seems pretty obvious that humans need water to live. August is asking if you're late. Yeah, you're a little late. You're 11 minutes late. That's not too late. Don't worry about it. Okay, so the problem with saying everyone knows is that you and um, I cannot possibly say what all 7 billion people on this planet know or do not know. Okay? Now when you say everyone, everyone means everyone. But there are definitely children out there that don't understand that humans need water to live. There may be people with um, without the, the mental capacity to understand that people need water to live, right? There might be just some guy that didn't, didn't even think about it. He just likes water and he drinks it every day, but he didn't realize we need it. He just likes it, <laughs> okay? So this is the type of absolute statement you, you have to try to avoid because it can get you into trouble. Now the problem is oftentimes students of English feel like making these bold statements these bold statements of certainty um, is good for writing because it, it seems confident, right? When you're making these bold statements of, it is undeniable that this, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, I do, I do smile a lot. Yeah, I try. I try. I'm a happy, I'm a happy fella. <laughs> Confidence is good, but sometimes what seems to be confident could, could actually be careless, right? When you're making bold statements, when you're making absolute statements, then it's easier sometimes for someone to um, argue your point and argue against your claim, right? So what we're talking about today is, is softening that absolute statement with something called hedging will seem to weaken the sentence in a way, but it actually strengthens your argument, okay? so. Let me start by this. Let me get you guys to finish these sentences. I'm going to put five kind of half sentences up here, and I would like you to, um, to finish them. CF Teaching is saying, yeah, you, sound, you can sound arrogant sometimes if, you, if you're making too many statements like that. That's right. Okay, so finish these sentences on your own. Young children tend to believe extended periods of al excessive alcohol consumption can result in Students are often afraid to speak in class because it seems likely that our use of social media will. And my personal favorite, Sean is quite possibly what? Okay, so use your imagination. Give me some ideas here. Don't worry about absolute statements. Just, just finish these sentences with your own thought. And then we're going to talk about how this applies to, to today's lesson, okay? So young children tend to believe. Just finish that sentence for me. I am going to remove myself from the screen, okay? I'm gonna put the, the music on, that monkey music that you guys like so much. And I want you to try to finish some of these sentences and put them into, um, into the chat for me, okay? And then I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why later. First, um, finish these sentences for me, okay? I'm gonna pop off here. Get to work, guys.
All right, good stuff, guys. Lots of good stuff coming into the chat here. So let me let me go over here for a second. I'm going to pop over to my notes where I put these these same sentences here. I'll make it nice and big so everybody can see. And what do we say? Well, young children tend to believe. Now, lots of lots of good stuff coming in here. You guys said. <laughs> um, Zainab said, yeah, the Easter Bunny, young children tend to believe that the Easter Bunny is real. Absolutely. Alejandra says, young children tend to believe that everything is free. Yeah, that's, that's good too. Lots of, lots of things you could say about what children believe. I'll put an idea in here and say, young people, young children tend to believe what their parents tell them, for example, okay? Including uh, the Easter Bunny, right? Okay, now that's, that's good. 
Really good. So extended periods of excessive alcohol consumption can result in, again, we had lots of, lots of good answers for this. Um, Swade said kidney, kidney failure. Okay. I'll put that one up there. Kidney failure. Good. Or not good. <laughs> but good answer. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, but other people just said sickness, um, long-term health problems, depression. Okay. Good answers coming in. Uh, what else do we have here? For number three, this is a good one for, for some of you maybe. Um, students are often afraid to speak in class because because somebody said the, the teacher isn't friendly. Uh, that's possible. Now, Josh, talking about confidence, right? Yeah, yeah. Somebody else said that too. Who said the. Where's that one? Somebody said they lack confidence. Where's that? <laughs> they lack practice. They don't have enough practice. Oh yeah, K Kieran, right? Okay, because they lack confidence. That, that's a good one. I'm going to put that one there. Because they lack confidence. Good one. All right, what about number four? Now, Pascoa, you said it seems likely that our use of social media will decrease soon. That's, that's interesting. Um, it's possible. It's possible. I can't, I can't argue uh, against that. Now, I don't know how to say your name, C-H ex exclamation point. Should I just call you ch like that with, with, with an exclamation in there? But you're saying, you're saying that our use of social media will increase. All right, decrease, increase, dominate our lives, somebody, somebody said. This is really good. Okay, increase more and more. <laughs> the last one, Sean is quite possibly a happy teacher. Sean will quite possibly become a novelist. Well, maybe. Yeah, that, that's possible. <laughs> He's quite possibly happy today. Right, yeah, okay. So let's, let's say that. He's quite possibly happy today. <laughs> we'll keep it simple. Okay. This is, this is good because Chari, okay, I'll call you Chari. <laughs> okay. So these five statements are not absolute statements, okay? I have put certain words or expressions in these sentences to save me or stop me, protect me from making an overly generalized um, categorical statement, all right? Now, we started talking about this last week. Sean is quite possibly the most popular teacher on YouTube. Well, I'm, yeah, okay, maybe, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'll, take, I'll take that one. Um, number one, we said young, young children tend to believe what their parents tell them. Now, last week, we, we started talking about this a little bit, that this little verb in here, tend to, is what we call a hedging word. This is a hedge, right? Meaning it reduces the impact of this sentence. It takes away the, the absolute certainty of the sentence and will save you from making um, some kind of, of uh, overly broad statement. Sahini's back. Hey, good to see you. Um, watch what happens. I mean, if I take that out and just say young children believe what their parents tell them, um, I agree that in general they do, but you can't be so categorical, not in academic writing anyway. You want to try to avoid that. So putting tend to in there will save you from that, okay? And it's the same thing with number two. Extended periods of excessive alcohol consumption can result in kidney failure. Now that word can is a hedge word, right? You don't want to say will. You can't say it will result in kidney failure because that's too absolute. You're, you can't be that certain. There are many people who drink too much alcohol that do not get long-term health problems or depression or kidney failure. So changing up that verb and saying can instead will, will take away that, that absolute statement and replace it with a safer um, statement that is still strong, right? 
but it's not as, as absolute as it was before. Right, Asta is saying it's a possibility, right? And it could be a strong possibility. Good. And the same, one, the same thing for the last three here, right? Students are often afraid to speak in class. I definitely have met students who are not afraid to speak in class. Alejandra is saying, um, could here? Yeah, right. Could, um, may, might, any of these slightly less certain um, modal verbs. Good, Alejandra, for sure. Okay. Number three, as I said, the word often is a really great adverb to use to, to hedge your statement, to, to decrease the impact of it and make it a little bit less absolute without weakening your sentence. And we'll talk a little bit about that, about that later, being kind of careful with, with how much you hedge. Okay? So again, if I take that away and say students are, students are afraid to speak in class, that's not necessarily true. It's not always true. Right? Good. Two more, and then I'm going to give you more uh, lists of words that you can use for hedges. Okay? So it seems likely that our use of social media will increase more and more. There's your hedge right there, right? It seems likely that. Now, I'm not saying it's certain, so you can't immediately disagree with me and say, no, you're totally wrong, because you don't, you don't know either, right? I don't know, you don't know, we can't be sure, so we don't want to sound 100% certain about something that we could not possibly be certain about. Omtimum 7 is from Libya, cool. Good to see you. Good to, to, to see Libya represented here in the classroom. Um, and the last one, Sean is quite possibly happy today. Well, Sean is happy today. But again, the problem with this is that only I know if I'm happy, right? Um, I mean, I may appear happy. I'm smiling. I'm, I'm having a good time. Or I seem to be having a good time. Maybe I feel, maybe I'm dead inside. I don't know. Maybe I feel nothing. Um, not the case, but you never know, so you may want to hedge it with Sean is quite possibly happy today. Sean seems happy today. Sean appears to be happy today, right? Um, just again to get away from making a statement that's not true. Okay, so this is what we're talking about today. We are talking about again what I what I call hedging. Now, the the actual word hedge itself, literally, we usually use it to talk about these kind of, these bushes on the side here that we use to, to kind of separate um, property, right? And you, you could kind of think about it the same way with words. These words are, they're limiting the sentence. They're, they're kind of stopping it from going too far. They're putting limitations and restrictions on the statement, just like these perfectly groomed um, hedges here, <laughs> right? Because as we said last week, sometimes you want to soften your statement. Hedgy the Hedgehog says, soften your statements to try to avoid making false claims, okay? And this is, this is what hedging is all about, <laughs> right? Um, because as we've said, just to be clear, hedging helps to avoid overgeneralizations, um, avoid absolute categorical statements, and hedging makes your claims harder to dispute, right? If you use a word like often or likely or may or could, it's actually, it seems like you're, you're weakening it, but you're actually making your, your claim a little bit stronger because it's harder to disagree with, okay? So let's look at different ways to hedge. I'm gonna give you a bunch of lists and then I'm going to uh, make you do some, some work for me. Rose is saying sometimes we have to be careful with hedging, and that's that's absolutely right. I mean, I can I can mention that now. Actually, I was going to mention it uh, later, but usually the problem with hedging is um, English learners usually don't quite hedge enough, right? Um, and I'm even using hedging here to avoid generalizations. But usually, um, language English language students will often make bold, uh, absolute statements in essays. The opposite 
is that um, native speakers tend to over hedge, right? Um, young students that speak English as a first language will often uh, put too many hedge words in a sentence and, and the result could be a, kind of a weak sentence that sounds like you don't really know what you're talking about. So like so many things in, in language, in writing, in, in communication, you have to find that balance between not sounding arrogant and 100% certain but also not sounding like you have no idea <laughs> what you're talking about, right? So it's, it's that delicate balance and we'll try to practice that today. So Rosa, you're absolutely right. You have to be careful with hedging as well. All things in moderation, okay? So we talked a little bit about this last week. Modals like can, could, may, and might. And other verbs like seem, appear, tend to, suggest, indicate, estimate. All of these are hedging verbs, okay, that you can use to, to avoid an absolute statement. So for example, a recent study suggests that dancers are more emotionally sensitive than the rest of us. The results may also point to a role the arts play in empathy training. Now this was a sentence that I just took out of um, an article that I found online yesterday. Very naturally written. Sometimes I usually write my own example sentences, but this one I just took right out of, the, out of a magazine or newspaper article. So these hedging expressions are everywhere, especially when talking about scientific studies and research. Okay, Rose is saying, do we use hedging when we write an essay about economics or medicine where we need absolute statements? Um, yes, I would still say that you, you want to use words like suggest or indicate or may, right? Because even in medicine, um, I wouldn't say you, you have a lot of absolutes in, in, in medical research as well. There are lots of medical studies that suggest, some of them say that, you know, coffee is good for you and then others will say that coffee is not good for you, right? So there's a lot of, um, there's very little absolute certainty in, in medical research as well. Okay, good question. And Karen is saying it makes you feel like you're less confident with your opinion. But that's, that's why you have to be careful. Now in this case, one hedge expression for, for uh, each sentence, this does not sound like lack of confidence. This sounds like um, a healthy level of um, uncertainty or, or, or doubt, right? The results may point to a role um, because they cannot say definitively, okay? It's not 100%, right, CF teaching, good. Okay, so adjectives. We're gonna go adjectives and then I'm gonna show you some adverbs, okay guys? Probable, possible, apparent, alleged. Alleged is a really common one that you'll hear in the news, right? For example, the alleged attacker was arrested within blocks from the scene of the crime. CF teaching lots of hedges used by politicians, absolutely. Um, kind of sometimes in a, in a manipulative way, for sure. Now in this case, on the news they will use the word alleged attacker because if this person was just arrested, they have not been taken to court, they have not been proven guilty uh, in the eyes of the law. So if a news organization does not put that there, then this person can later go back and sue them. Um, so you have to protect yourself if you're a journalist and use words like alleged. All right, good. Adverbs. So we have lots of different adverbs that we use to hedge. Frequency, often, sometimes, usually, right? Um, <clears throat> Steve, you like a, a healthy level, a health, healthy skepticism? Sure, good. Now I won't show you an example here because we just, we just talked about often a bunch, right? Rose is asking impersonal passive, it is believed that, yes, that is definitely hedging, right? It is said that. This is hedging for sure. Good. So adverbs of frequency are hedges. Adverbs of degree, like somewhat, approximately, reasonably, entirely, right? These will, again, make, make what you're saying a little bit less certain, like this. She was worried, but also somewhat relieved 
that she would no longer have to keep her friend's secret. I guess, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I wrote this one. I'm not exactly sure what I was talking about. Maybe she sees something, something's on Facebook now. It's out there, all right? Now she's worried about her friend, but, but now she knows that she's not the only person who knows, and therefore she is somewhat relieved. All right? She's still worried about her friend, though. <laughs> Um, I don't know what the secret is, though. You can, you can fill in that blank. All right, in two other statements using those adverbs of degree, that's not entirely true is, is a really good hedge, or that's not necessarily the case. These little words that we put in there to soften it, if I say that's not true or that's not the case, it sounds very harsh and short and certain. You want to know the secret too? Yeah, I do too. Yeah, <laughs> not even I, I don't even know what it is, right? It was absolute secrecy. <laughs> All right, so that's not entirely true, not necessarily so. These are really good hedge adverbs as well, okay? And what else we have? Certainty, possibly, likely, perhaps, apparently, right? And, and perhaps, the, the granddaddy of them all, the big one, the one that, uh, that I like so much, arguably. Arguably is arguably the best hedge word out there because arguably means you can argue it. So I know that some people will say that arguably, this word arguably, basically takes all of the, the, the strength out of a sentence, but the good thing about arguably is that you can basically say whatever you want if you, if you put that word in there <laughs> and all you're saying is that I'm going to make a statement which you could argue about. Okay, so for example, Federer is arguably the best player in tennis history, right? So I'm putting this word in there meaning um, this is how I feel, he's the best player in tennis history, but you could argue with that if you wanted to, and I would be okay with it, right? So, <laughs> debatable, exactly, Steve, that's a good one too. Now again, a lot of people really dislike the word arguably, and you, you certainly wouldn't want to use it too often in academic writing, but in conversation, in some kind of debate, um, an argument that you're in, the word arguably is, is, is very, uh, very useful. Okay, and a few other expressions that I'm going to get you guys to do some work for me. So other expressions, it is possible, these kind of introductory um, phrases here or clauses, it is said, and this is what Rosa was talking about, it is said or um, it is suggested, it is believed, and then sometimes we kind of put, we, we put them together, right? We say something may suggest or something appears to indicate. You can, you can kind of combine them without using too many hedge words. Another question coming in. Do we use the word arguably with an argument in academic writing? Um, I, I probably wouldn't use arguably in, in a very formal essay, um, thesis statement or something, but it, it is possible. <laughs> there's, there's my hedge. It is possible to use arguably in academic writing. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Navjot is saying it is probable. Yeah, good. Okay, so let's look at this sentence. Studies appear to indicate that as little as 20 minutes of daily physical activity can significantly reduce one's chances of heart disease later in life. Okay. Yeah, Kieran's saying, can we use hedges in favor if we're not sure about the fact? Exactly, that's exactly right. You're, you're using these hedges to, to kind of protect yourself. Like a hedge is, is, is like you're saying, um, I'm not completely certain, or a hedge is saying, I'm not going to commit to this 100%, right? I'm not going to say that I'm 100% certain about this. <laughs> okay. So that's why you don't exercise, because just 20 minutes will do? Yeah, for sure. So studies appear to indicate that as little as 20 minutes of daily physical activity 
can significantly reduce one's chances of heart disease later in life. Now, the, the interesting thing about this sentence is that you're using a combination of hedging expressions to soften the certainty of what you're saying, but based on previous classes we've done, you're also, I'll come, oh, I'll come back to reduce, you're also using expressions like as little as and significantly, which are intensifying expressions to sound stronger, right, or more emphatic. So in one sentence, you're hedging your certainty, but you're emphasizing your, uh, your points, right, as little as 20, significantly reduce. So it's not always about weakening something, it's, it's, it's always going to be a combination of, of weak and strong. And speaking of kind of weak, the word reduce in itself is a kind of a hedging verb as well, because I'm not saying it eliminates one's chances of heart disease, it just reduces the chances, right? So it's kind of a weaker verb that we use there, okay? So after all of that, I'm going to get you guys to do some work for me, okay? So, well, I'm not doing the mistake of the week yet. I'm getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> Forget about that. Go back in here. I am going to put this into the chat. I just put a link. Um, you can follow that link to the document and make a copy, or you can just look on the screen. I'm going to make this nice and big so everybody can see it. All I would like you to do now, I'm going to pop off the screen for a few minutes. I'm giving you five sentences which are either absolute statements or over generalizations, and I would like you to try to soften them a little bit. Hedge these sentences so that they are not as absolute and certain to try to actually strengthen um, the points that they're trying to make. Okay, so either go into the document and make a copy or just look on the screen and put your answers in the chat. The first one, A, Apple is the most famous brand in the world. Sounds very certain. Um, you might want to hedge that a little bit. Okay, so again, I'm going to pop off. I'll put the music on for about three to five minutes and then we'll come back and go over this together. Okay, guys, get to work.
All right, guys. Good, 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 good. Lots of stuff coming in. I may have cut it a little bit short here because I want to make sure we have lots of time to go over it all together. But there's good stuff coming in. And that's good. Now, Debasish. Maybe you're coming in a little, I'm not sure if you're coming in a little bit late, but you're actually, you're taking your statement the, the opposite way, saying no doubt Apple is the most famous brand, is actually trying to make it stronger, but we want to soften it a little bit because there, there is some doubt in there. You could, you could argue against that. You could say, I don't know, Coca-Cola could, could possibly be the most famous brand in the world. McDonald's, perhaps. And see, again, I'm, I'm using these, these hedging words um, very naturally here, right? Okay, so let's, let's look at these. Apple is the most famous brand in the world. Um, who's got one for me? You guys saying words like probably? Good. Suede, all right. So Suede put in arguably. Yeah, Apple is arguably the most famous brand in the world, meaning it might be the most famous brand in the world, but you could debate that if you wanted to, okay? Let's make that blue or something. Ah, yeah, I'm not going to bother with that anymore. That's fine. Okay, so that's good. Now, um, some people said, I think, like, seems to be. Apple seems to be the most uh, famous brand in the world, and that's, that's good, probably. Now, I will say one thing, because I saw probably a lot. <coughs> Um, probably is a good hedge word, but you probably don't want to use it too much, if at all, in a very formal academic essay. The two hedge words, maybe and probably, um, are quite informal, they're quite casual. So for this exercise, it's fine to, to use probably, but in an essay for, for school, I would not use the word probably, using something like perhaps um, likely or, or possibly sounds better. Probably is very conversational. Okay? That's good though. Okay, so B. Yeah, Kieran is saying people often fear what they do not understand. That's a good good adverb there for for hedging. And some people said usually, often. Navjot said people may fear what they don't understand. Good. People often, again, from Zara, that's good. Okay. Good. So, you could also say people tend to. Right? People tend to fear what they do not understand. Now, CF Teaching, you're saying that I'm cracking up. Um, am I cracking up to everybody or just, just one person? Let me know if, if the audio is, is being weird, okay? If the sound is weird. But people tend to is good. People often fear. Good, good, good. Um, C, the initial findings of the study prove that our theory is correct. Yeah, I mean, you would just want to be careful in science and research to use that word prove without a, a, a shadow of a doubt. Okay, this sounds good, Alejandro, thank you. Okay, so rather than prove, um, who, who gave me the, the magic words that I was looking for? Uh, to some extent, okay, that's, that's pretty good. Initial findings. Navjog gave me indicate, good. Asta gave me suggest. Yeah, right. And I, again, I know it seems weird to be, to be saying suggest in a scientific study rather than prove, but even in scientific research, a little bit of modesty, um, just, it just sounds, it sounds better. It sounds like someone is more open to um, possibilities. Okay? Good. What about D? We will not know the consequences of this decision for some time. Let me see here. Yeah, so Alejandro, you said we will probably not know. That's good. What's another one? 
Yeah, yeah, some of you have given me this one. Like, it seems. It seems we will not know the consequences of this decision for some time. That's a good hedge at the beginning there. That's nice. Um, but again, even if you said here, we will, as, as Alejandro said, probably, possibly, likely, um, any of these hedge words are good. And the last one, I'll scroll up a bit here. The differences in results were due to the participants' inability to understand the questions. That's very certain there. So some of you used words like were probably do, or you could say may have. The differences in results may have been due to the participants' inability to understand the questions, or may be due. Okay, um, arguably, Zainab said, that's good. Good and what else? Give me one more for differences. No, I can't think, I think that's it. Arguably. Good. All right, no, that's good. Okay, so use hedges. Avoid these absolute statements, okay? There's one more thing on, on hedging that I'm going to mention to you. But first, of course, it's time for the mistake of the week. So let me go ahead, let me get in here. All right. And again, if you have um, if you have any questions or doubts, put them put them in the chat and I'll try to uh, to help you out if anything's unclear, okay? Mistake of the week is here. It's time for the mistake of the week. You guys know what to do. Um, if it's your first time, let me explain. I'm going to put a sentence up here. The sentence contains a common English mistake. Alejandro, you're going to be the last one. <laughs> okay. So whoever uh, finds the mistake first is categorically, absolutely the best student on the internet. Okay, without a doubt, unquestionably. <laughs> Most likely do CF teaching. That's that's a good one. Yeah, good. So can you spot the mistake? I'm going to put the sentence on here. I'm going to disappear for about five seconds. It's a common mistake that people make in the English language. See if you can find it. I'll put the music on. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. All right, find me the mistake. Go for it, guys. All right, so you guys are fast. Good for you. And of course, Alejandra, the one that said that she would be the last, is the first, I believe. Is that right? Yeah, Alejandra got it. Um, good for you. And Asta, I saw you came in just quick, short, just second place. That's, that's, that's pretty good. Second, second fastest person on the internet is still pretty good. <laughs> All right. Yeah, people have weak internet. That happens, right? It slows you down a little bit. But in this sentence, of course, I threw in some hedge words just to try to trick you to see if I was uh, testing your, your, your hedging abilities, but that's not the mistake. So though the deal seems beneficial for both companies, some of the terms may be difficult for both sides to accept. And of course, the, the, the mistake that you guys found is accept. Okay, except is not the word you're looking for. You actually are, are meaning in this sentence the verb 
accept, right? To accept, um, not the same as accept. Although, pronunciation-wise, when we're speaking naturally in a sentence, accept and accept sound exactly the same. Okay, you don't really, you don't usually say accept or ex accept, right? It's it's the same sound, different spelling, different meaning, and it's a common mistake that that students make. A little little tiny mistake, obviously, but you want to avoid it. All right. Yay, good for you, Alejandra. Yeah. <laughs> okay. How are we doing for time? Oh yeah, we got time. Because I want to do I want to show you one more thing before we we go today, okay? Yeah, party time. I want to um, leave you with an expression. Okay? Like kind of a this is the the expression of the week, okay? We have a term in English and you may it may translate into into your own languages. I'm not sure exactly how you would say it. But it is the expression to hedge one's bets, bets, to hedge your bet, or to hedge my bets, is an expression we use in English, meaning um, to protect yourself against um, loss, basically. In, in a casino, in the realm of gambling, to hedge your bets means to support more than one result in order to protect yourself from losing something, okay? So, if you're at the horse races, or maybe, I don't know really how to play roulette very well, but, or is that, is that I can't even tell, is that roulette? Yeah, I think that's roulette. <laughs> or, or craps, I'm not sure. So, when you're placing a bet, if you place two bets, the likelihood of you losing both is, is slightly reduced, right? If you make one bet, if you lose it, then you lose all your money. But if you make, if you make multiple bets, this increases the, the chances that you will win, okay? Now, I'm not here to teach you how to gamble. Um, that's not the point. But yes, Steve, you're saying, can we use it on investments? Absolutely. I mean, this is a financial thing. You can use it on investments or actual betting at a casino. <laughs> but you can also use it for, for other situations in life. Anytime you're trying to get one thing, but you don't want to end up with nothing, you want to hedge your bets to protect yourself from, from loss. Hedge funds, exactly, CF teaching, good. Now, in this case, you say he knew, he knew which company he preferred, but he decided to hedge his bets and apply to several other firms. So, he knew he wanted a job over here. This is the job he wanted. But if he only applied to that place, if he didn't get the job, he would have nothing. So, of course, he, he puts some applications at different firms just in case his, his pref preference, his preferred company does not hire him. So he is hedging his bets, okay? Could be the same thing, I don't know, with relationships, maybe, right? <laughs> maybe, maybe not, I don't know. You, you've got two possible suitors, two men in your life, maybe two possible women that you're, you're considering going out on a date with? I don't, I don't know. You want to hedge your bets. I, I, probably not the, the nicest thing to do. I'm not sure. But this is a term that we use um, in English for finances, but also just for, for life. Anytime that you want to protect yourself from uh, losing something entirely, right? You want to hedge it. And just like that, what we've been talking about today with hedging in language is a form of protecting yourself, protecting your, your claim, okay, um, from being uh, proven false by somebody uh, reading your essay or, or listening to your presentation. Yeah, well, CF teaching, uh, politicians definitely hedge a lot, right? I mean, that's a different thing that we could talk about. I mean, that's, that's a type of hedging that we actually sometimes call um, weasel words, where you put little words in there to manipulate the meaning of your, your sentence. Politicians, advertising, they definitely use some, some hedging in their statements for sure. Okay, so always hedge your bets in life, at the casino, in love, maybe, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, and that's unfortunately um, all the time we have for today. Okay, so uh, let me pop out here, back to the back to the bright red screen. 
Sadly, it's time for us to say goodbye again. Uh, as usual, the hour flew by. It's always a pleasure for me to, uh, to come in and teach you guys once a week. Some people were, were asking about the time. It's every Thursday morning at 9 o'clock Vancouver time. So that's Pacific Standard Time. Um, just look it up on the world clock yeah, on the internet there. You'll find it. Google it and you can uh, find out when I'm coming up live. But if this time doesn't work for you, if you're watching this um, uh, as a video on YouTube, that's, that's fine too. There are other classes that you can, that you can watch. Mark has classes. Neil has classes. Um, Nicole, Josh, they all have classes that are uh, throughout the week that you can uh, watch as well or instead. And of course we've got the Facebook page where we put um, announcements about classes and whatnot and we can answer your questions on Facebook. Learn English on Facebook. Join the group if you're not in the group. Keep watching uh, the videos. Keep joining the class. Keep telling your friends and your neighbors and um, keep, keep practicing your English, obviously, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's it. Um, have a good week, everybody. Have a good weekend. Happy Halloween, because I'm not going to see you until November. And, um, yeah, we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.